Bob Beard Mule, and yeah, Bob Beard Mule. I start playing that mess here, lady. I'm still, I'm gonna keep playing the G's over. <laughs> Red apple rag.
thing when you play that. There's one, uh, there's one that I just about had when we made that, Gordon. Oh, uh, when I was 13 years old, I hit my first tune on the pit. Started trying to play. I'm still trying to play one of them. And, uh, oh, uh, no boy come up here to Arkansas working on the farm. Because I was raised right in this side of the best town in the south. played a tune and uh, just a little of it and I added to it and Connie Mead and I played it for square dances. I call it Sawmill Gray. Back and forth on yeah. the track. He's driving one in the first thing back and forth over here. <coughs> Fed it over to Early Cole. And when they called him, he was putting on the track. 
explain most of your square dances around here, Erling, Crane, uh, yeah. Garbage, and uh, a rower. Learn on the public, Billy Springs, yeah. you know, uh, Nixie and Golden, or uh, Reed Springs. Mm -hmm. and that's down in Yeah, well, I started to say some of them get a little, when you get down around Reed Springs, I imagine you got a little lively sometimes. Broader Festival, yeah. down here three times. Fiddler's Contest, so we tried the whole and Truth Consequence in Mexico and Hale Center, Texas, and all of these places of Maine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where are any words that you can Any words in this book? Here's one. Uh, Hale Center, Texas. I never heard it played at the Fiddler's Town. Uh, Shorty, talk, talk a little bit lower, Shorty. Um, so, uh, I said, let's uh, play Turkey and the Stroll. There, 1964, two days and nights. Fourth of July, and, uh, I give us old boy five dollars a second half. So I said, let's play Turkey and the Stroll. I've never heard it played in Fiddler's Contest, and never played it since. And we played that, and we got more. Hmm. Uh, applause than the guy did that won first. Play Turkey Stroll, but he's in Texas. You couldn't yeah. get nothing else. No, that's right. So they give him birth. Yeah. And uh, well, they play a different style down there, don't they, or do they? Uh, yeah, they've got a different style of fiddling. Yeah. Just like when I went to Truth or Consequence in Mexico in April of 1964. Shorty yeah. just looked at the record a while ago. I got a Cherokee Indian. The first introduction I got, they took me out to the Silver Slipper. They was putting on a banquet there that <laughs> afternoon. For the fitter. There's Nebraska, and Missouri, and Oklahoma, and uh, Tennessee, North and South Carolina, and I was the only guy in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Well, we went in, and there's a bar, and the sheriff's wives of New Mexico was a setting this banquet. They had that uh, star, yeah. goldish cord around their neck, and tied this star, sheriff's star. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I played two or three tunes there with some of them, and I wouldn't enjoy it. But well, there's a Cherokee Indian walk up, big enough to go by and hunt and switch. He's 48 years old. And he uh, he said, Here, he handed me his fiddle. He said, You're from Missouri. He said, I was raised in Oklahoma. Of course, he said, I live here. Mm -hmm. And he said, It's in tune for the Black Mountain Rag, Broken Down A. He said, I know you know what I'm talking about. That anybody in Oklahoma, Arkansas, or Missouri does know. Mm -hmm. And uh, said this damned outfit out of here said they ain't got the style that we got. Oak is in Arkansas, Missouri. <laughs> well, he had a guitar. Me and him, we walked up on a little platform and we played that. And these women is sitting this banquet, is all dressed in red and little white polka dots. Yeah. We started her. They hollered everybody get your partner and they square dance. <laughs> All around this set their the riddles down that they were putting on the table. <laughs> well, when we got through with that one, he said, can you play a blues in that key? And I said, yeah, then they played blues. I played that, and they hollered everybody get your partner, and they around and they said. <laughs> and I said, no, I'll tell you, I said, you're elected second after me. And uh, I've already been doing that. And, uh, and uh, so that evening, then we, uh, we went, after that, we ate this meal, we played all evening at that uh, fiddler's contest. And they weeded us all out but eight to play that night. Mm -hmm. Of course, I happened to be lucky enough that I got to stay in the eight, me and the cherry key. Well, there's a bar, right? Deuce, the lobby, the hotel where I stayed, all you had to do is open the door and I was gone. Yeah. Well, I went in there, drank me a glass of beer after the first one, and there's a man walked over and he said, I want you to meet my wife. And I said, well, all right. I've never met nobody in this place before. So, uh, oh, she just real dark black Cherokee, mm -hmm. long straight black hair. She said, now I know this fellow, well, quaint with him. She was a Cherokee too, or he was too. She said,
said his weakness is he's liable to come tonight to second at you when he can't even see a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and her husband is quiet as one of us. And he said she can do anything on guitar he can. But he come, <clears throat> he come uh, in pretty good shape. And he had four of these little bottles uh, that you buy on an airplane. Yeah. And he said, here, said, dash two of these down, I'll dash two of them. I said, we're going to get with these sons of bitches on that black mountain <laughs> And uh, me and him, we uh, we got more falls. And, uh, but they was two. Then I was 63. Well, the two that won first and second prize was 70 and 75. One is from Texas, one from Albuquerque. It way up here above me then. But they give me a grade of 98 on the playing field. And I got the deal, deal in there, looks like a high school diploma, which something I never got. Oh, uh, I signed the Bob Barker. Yeah. Well, and uh, they were grading them on age more than they was on the yeah. evidently. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Matt played all around the wall? Oh, yeah, old, old Matt, Mr. Vodka. <clears throat> I met him at Hale Center and I met him at Truth or Consequence. And he offered me about some vodka both times, I thank him. Oh, uh, of course they weeded him out. Well, they didn't have him a darn bit. He walked around and played the fiddle up and went up again the wall most time he had to. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other time, was going home. He was still playing. <laughs> yeah, he still playing. So you mentioned the tune there. What, Philly? Billy Creek Blue. Now, is that our family creek that's named after, or is that the name yeah, of Yeah, is that tennis? I played that. I played it broken down. Hey, let me see it. In the key of D, if I can play the skill, play that.
And uh, I was up there playing. And there's one old boy came in, great big guy, about my age, but oh, he's big, very big guy. Had all kind of dirty dungarees and everything. And he'd had a little one too many. But he wasn't bad, but you could tell he was kind of had too much. Well, I looked back finally over my shoulder and boy morning was wide eyed as she could be. And I found that, she, I knew we'd better get going. She was ready to go. And I found out he'd been coming up trying to get her to dance with him. And she, it just really shook her up. And so she hasn't been back, to, but that's the only time now that I've seen, and that wasn't bad. I mean, you know. I know Bob and Art said they have just an awful good time. Oh, and they're just, a, they're really a good bunch of people. Now they've had a few, uh, oh, these modern, Kind of hippie types come to think they're really the, you know, really oh. folklore, and they're, you know, they're not. But they, they don't ever seem to stay because they keep this pretty, uh, pretty pure. Right? In other words, they don't. Uh, uh, they have uh, this Miss Posey plays electric <coughs> guitar. I mean, she's good, but since she's amplified, then they started amplifying the fiddle now. And uh, then this boy I was telling about from Sparta, this young fellow, I'd say he's probably in his late 20s. He's a preacher over there, and he works at MFA Milling. But he came in with a little amplifier, and really, then he kind of changed it, though. He was so good. Boy, he was all up and down the neck on this electric guitar he had. He, he had evidently had a group. They all knew him, you know, and everything. And oh, he was a good guitar player. But the fiddle thing kind of stopped then when he got there, because he did some of his solos. And I... I'd in a way, that was fun, you know, but in a way, I'd rather have the fiddle player oh, and, the, and, the, and the square dancing and everything, but to me, that's the, that's the fun of it, you know. But the sad thing, and what upsets me, is that there's no young people. Very, every once in a while now, there was a young couple from, uh, let's see, I think Stratford or something that was there one night. And by young, I mean in their 20s. And the girl jigged really good. She could do that back step, you know, and everything. She was really good. And she had her little about three-year-old girl there that was imitating her, trying to, you know. And I thought, well, that's what I wish there was more of, because it's just kind of dying out, you know. And uh, I wish they could. Well, none here. Well, i lost nice and clever. There's no more, none of it up there anymore, you know. The last one around here. This is the poorest, uh, the poorest place ever was oh, uh, for country music. Oh, uh, now the other... Well, it was Friday the 13th last month. They had six girls here from Costa Rica, exchange students, and uh, David Walker and his wife and Carolyn Cheatham, they brought one a piece up here, and me and Archie played, and we played from the jig dance. They, they jig dance right here. One bar. of them was 20 years and old. I mean, they, they didn't do that Mexican hat dance or anything like that. They did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm, I'm fine. There's I'm a good fine, uh, jig dance tune. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's what they did. 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 That's what they did.
I put it in the, uh, to play it the way I play it, and then uh, the guy puts his extra part in that.
Well, they're the one who wanted to quiet community, but I know I don't play no more down there. And they had to get Archie here a while back. They got some guy down from the roar and a woman with a tambourine. You know, there's a lot of music in town. <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> and so a woman that jigs in it. Now that's yeah. the way they do. And they had a fiddler from the roar. And I asked Archie how he was. Archie said he played Wagner, he said he was. And Archie said, I couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I see that same thing over here at Ozark. This building, this woods, then, like I said, the only thing that's holding that building up are the buildings on either side of it. And of course, the city fathers, some of them, they look down on that Saturday night stuff anyway, you know, it's kind of crude. And they want this Mrs. Anderson, who's really a fine person. She's just full of spit and vinegar. And they called her up and asked her to get together with them to get a petition, asked Mr. Woods to get rid of that building, you know. And lo and behold, right after that happened, some guy took a picture of it and won a national award, and there was a big picture of it in, a, in the newspapers all over the place, you know. And all they had a fit over that, so it's kind of... Uh, the other day, we were down here hunting a railroad material and everything. Well, there too. Well, might have been the day you went to play for a prank call. And he won't ask me. He said, I don't know. It's a railroad history. I said, hey, why don't you tell him to go after me online? Yeah.
on either side. My grandpa brought me, used to sit and tell me tales, and uh, a bunch of them old uh, Civil War veterans that I used to sit around there early. There's a lot of them up mm-hmm. until around 1930. Oh, uh, but anyhow, the wagoner, the Tennessee wagoner, he drove uh, a wagon. And then they come out with a tune, the Oklahoma wagon. Well, Oklahoma wasn't a state till 1970. No. Yeah. No. And somebody just named that. But yeah. there was a Tennessee yeah. wagoner that drove a wagon on, uh-huh. on either side. And yeah. now here's what they call okay. Oklahoma wagon. Well, just a minute. Paul, while I think of it, I got two letters 
this last week. Feathers contest is March the 10th of April, and one at Bolivar the 31st of April. Uh -huh. And uh, it says, a little note there, that uh, Dean Johnson and his brother don't won't play, but they will second after anybody that hasn't got to say how. So, uh, yeah, uh, but that, well, the way they play that 8th of January, Parker Guns and Bridget kept coming with me a little while ago and all that. Oh, now I heard him talking about back in 18 and 14. Well, that war uh, with it, when Pack and Hammond Jackson fought in New Orleans mm -hmm. in 1812. Yeah. The war of 1812, and he got 1814 in his song. Yeah. Oh. Uh, 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 Here's one of the in the teens and early 20s. How come you do me like you do? to do this, that I want you to have, uh, I want you to leave Barry, I want Barry to keep one copy of my printed bibliography, which printed in 1972 in Indiana. I've had one bound up nice in a red binding, and I wanted to keep that one. And I want you to give her one complete uh, copy of the uh, of the supplement as far as the government. And otherwise, Brian doesn't want to be bothered, doesn't need to be bothered with any of the material connected with either the Printed good long of the supplement. I want you to take everything, every scrap of manuscript that concerns that. You don't have to pick them because she's blind. But I, I'm sure you're going to be trusted to do that. And Maya knows that. And so I want you to get all that from Maya. And, and take it. Well, your name is, uh, they tell me, Gordon McCann of Springfield, Missouri. And my collaborator at this last work called the Supplement. And I want you to take the whole business from now on and do whatever you damn please with it. But I suggest that certain things. What I want you to fix a new title page for it with uh, both of our names on the title page. Uh, I want it clear that you have done uh, more than half of the work on the supplement. You didn't do anything on the original job, the printed job at all, because uh, I didn't know you then. But uh, I'm willing that you should take the, this material that I've got together and 
put the whole thing under your name without mentioning me at all, except in that you might mention no. that I have helped you with it. That's perfectly all right with me if you would rather do it that way. If you can get any satisfaction or any good out of it, one more book to my credit won't help me any now, because I've written plenty of books. And you see, I don't need a more credit, but you haven't published anything yet. And if, if it'll help you, I want you to do that. Or if you don't, if you're not able to do it, they take the whole damn thing and destroy it if you want to. But I want Mary to have one complete copy of the supplement up till now. You gave me one bound up nice, and I think you can just give her that one. But a black binding on it, uh, face board binding on it, it's, but that's good enough. I want her to keep that along with a nicely bound copy of the original bibliography which I have given her. But that's all she needs to have of this bibliography at all. She's not particularly interested in it. I'm going to say the date is April 3rd. April 3rd, 1976. I'm in a better hospital, I believe I'm near my end. I think of the last nights of the church and made my will and everything. God knows I'm going to leave anybody. But I want Gordon McCann to have everything connected with the, with the bibliography, both the printed one and the other accepting one copy of each that they left to Mary, with Mary. One copy of the printed bibliography which she has already had there. One photo photo copy. Uh, that's the one I see right The copy of the of the uh, well, and I'll state that I'll state that if this ever is published, any profits from it will go to Vance Randolph and Mary Parler Randolph. You I don't think do there will be. That's, no, that's right. Just for I'll, your satisfaction, you can put that on. I'll show that you're a nice fellow and all that. Well, no. <laughs> but uh, that's all it is because there won't be any profits. It's about anything at all. It can't be. Said anything. <laughs> this is my idea. I am unable to do any more with a thing myself, and I want, I don't like to throw it away. And I, there's nobody else that I can entrust it to except Gordon McCann.
Oh, here's a uh, one there. He's there tonight. There's a
seen him dance to those over there. Now he plays, see, Emmanuel Wood plays Cacklin' Hen a lot. That yeah. seems to be one of his favorites. He I likes got it. that on uh, tape and on record too. Yeah. Oh, uh, Chubby Wise plays it. They've a lot to that Cacklin' Hen. Some puts a lot more in it than some others. Yeah, see, so he plays it in G, and then, you know, that one part where he goes in and switch up to E on the thing, and then, that, you know, he play it. Of course, I don't understand okay. all this. Is that that? Yeah. yeah. That's it.
his arch in Korea. And uh, but the jug finally got him. He went to the state national. And Archie told me to drink himself to death. Archie told me? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Lord, Archie, you know, he wouldn't have nothing but 10 cups of coffee. Well, Archie would drink a whole pot of coffee while he said. Archie, buddy. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, Archie told him. But he said, Archie told him. Yeah, Archie told him. He used to, his grandmother was Cloud, <laughs> in Clouds and Henry, my grandmother was Henry, and all, uh, like uh, Grandpa Rickman, and the granny side of the house was, it was Smith, of course there's Smith several for her. And uh, <coughs> Smith and Old Banyans and, and McLean's and all the, uh, they were, now that Old Banyan and McLean is just about as German as yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, uh, or about his Polish, I guess. Yeah, well. <laughs> McLean and ain't Matt McLean and ain't Lynn O'Banion and all of them, but anyhow, well, uh, Grandpa said, Granny side out, all they had sense enough to do was fish and drink whiskey and play the fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's the way Archie spoke for them clouds. Now they was all, I never saw one but what to play, and his grandmother was a darn good figure. He, he don't remember his grandmother, but I played when we was kids with Archie's dad, and we played together when we were kids. But his grandmother, and she could get mad and cuss just as wicked as she could play with it. <laughs> but anyhow... Well, I go, what was he, uh, uh, Archie's daddy. Daddy, that's what I think. He died about three or four years ago. Yeah, something like that. Searcy County boys and stuff like this, and of course it, it's fairly good quality, but uh, you don't realize how sophisticated we've gotten in our music compared to some of these old bands, but I think you'd enjoy listening to them. I've heard heard some of them, and it's, it's, it's such odd fiddling, you know. Yeah, it really is. It's yeah. it's, oh. Well, I guess they went by their own rules or something, because it sure sounds different than it does now. If you'd ever want to listen to those, well, I'd be happy to loan them to I us. guess I've, I've heard about everything in the, in the band mm -hmm. line, and in these a fiddler's contest, he's far yeah. along with I went to. I've heard some very odd fiddling, too. Of course, these would be crude by today's standards, you know. I mean, uh, what we listen to today, these things, then they get, oh, they've redone, I got one album of Uncle Dave Macon's uh, yeah. songs and stuff. And uh, they're actually pretty good quality. They're a lot better than I, I would have thought they could have gotten off those old records. Oh, uh, here's a, one I got off of that scrapbook I listened to, that Wayne Glenn put Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, plug into that on Saturday morning sun and bully the town and I'd heard that years ago. <laughs>
wait. <laughs> Well, I tell you, there's, 
that, of course, Clever's changed a lot, like all towns in the old arch, you know, but now I never did hear too much. I guess it was just a matter of church or any of the Holder's family, you know, playing fiddles or anything. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm away from here now. That's where uh, Don and Sally live. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, Lord, I know what that's going to be all about it. That's the fiddle he got off Art Galbraith that, that he didn't yeah. want to sell. Sure. That's the fiddle he got off Art Galbraith that he didn't want to sell. Sure, that's the fiddle he got off Art Galbraith that he didn't want to sell. Did uh, Claudia ever get his built? Uh, he's a built. Oh. Well, he's built on it a year ago. Uh, <laughs> he wants to show you. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I'd like to... Now, if you are a tolerant man, and you know, I think you're a tolerant patient, I would like to bring my guitar down sometime. All right. I love to do it, but, I, you know, I, I haven't ever played enough. I yeah, love these some case there. Yeah, right. Here's your, here's your case. Is that what's up for us? Well, this is got a fiddle in it. Oh, no, there's not another case there, huh? I don't know where it's at. Okay. This is my conservatory. That's what I want. Armstrong Hall. Yeah. Uh, all these cases are both marked yellow. Uh, those are good look cases. I'll get the door. You want me to close this door? Yeah. Okay. Shut it and then I'll. All right. I'll move your fiddle here. I've got a name, you know. Now, this one, I think, is a nightingale. Yeah, I said nightingale on it. Let me have this one. Oh, man, that's good looking cases. Oh, uh, this one, the shorty gives 30 something for it. But them others, the brown ones, cost uh, oh, 20 something. That is before everything went to going up. You know? well, I started saying, see, I I bought a J50 Gibson back, oh gosh, I guess it's been uh, 17, 18 years ago, mm -hmm. back when Gibson was still a pretty good guitar. Of course, then it was 100, I paid 135 for it, which I thought was quite a bit. The same thing sells for 450 now. That doesn't mean it's any better. It just means inflation. There, yeah. Uh, that, that's a, one of the Veneris. Oh, uh, 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 look at I got that off of WA. My cousin. Oh, there's a pearl on it and everything. Isn't that pretty? It's got that uh, inlay table. Yeah. Oh, yeah. isn't that pretty? Ooh, Hoover says that's a lot of fun. Well, that's really pretty. Uh, now, when, you know, when I bought uh, when I bought that guitar, I didn't have sense enough to bargain for a good case, so I had just a cheap old case. Here is one that bought me in 1990. Oh, yeah. I've got three fiddles, broken down A, uh, straight A, and, and, uh, and G sharp. This is here. Oh, oh, there, I had my grandson yeah. down there. Uh -huh. What does that stand for? This railroad is supposed to be able to St. Louis Arm Mountain and Southern Railroad. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And I had him. You know, would you mind sometime if I came down and we just kind of talk? I can tell you boys. Listen and observe and everything. Like you talk about the Civil War veterans telling you yeah. stories. I'm sure I can get a tape of a lot of your experiences when you were growing up in Hurley, because Hurley's always been an interesting town to me. Well, of course, I've been familiar because Mona and my wife, people come all around in there, you know. I can tell you uh, some interesting Civil War stories that I got right off of them. That's what I mean. That and then just the early days there. Them old guys. Around uh, Hurley, you know. Yeah. About when they. I come to leave the South and join the Union Army and, and uh, the trouble they got in. Oh, yeah. Shorty Scramble. Let's see. Still got this one here. Now, that's uh, that's the uh, that's my hummingbird. That's the hummingbird. Yeah. yeah that's, oh, that's that mother pearl. That's you. That's what Dad got in my hand. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that pretty? See that broken on it? That's it. Uh, Let's play some play the Black Mountain right here.
This fiddle's lighter. Uh -huh. Then, mm -hmm. oh, Dad gave twenty-five dollars for that fiddle yeah. in December nineteen ninety. Boy, tired heard it from a fella. He'd uh, been in France, come back. Well, you knew Tuffy Hall, didn't you? Yeah. That's the Mabel Hall then. Uh, see Irma, Irma Hall. Her daughter married Mona's uncle, Bill Pierce. And I, uh, Miss, Miss Hall is in pretty bad health right now, Mabel Hall. All right, is that Tuffy's wife? That's Tuffy's wife, uh huh? Well, Tuffy, one of my boys was too, Tuffy. Uh huh. Oh, uh, Tuffy and her still living? No, he isn't. Is Tuffy Hall dead? The, her husband, yeah, that was it. That Tuffy. Now, there's another Tuffy that's, uh, what, in his 50s now? Late 50s, probably, or something? Yeah, that's your son. Tuffy taught school. Yeah, you know. he's superintendent over at Portland now. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I know that thing off the bed. Yeah, it's also. <laughs> okay. But anyway, they took it out. Took it out. I'm not right. sure. I've got to hit the bathroom. Okay, okay. all right. She had to let the cold And Gus was there. Who was the Davis now you mentioned? Taylor John. When I see Mona's grandmother, Willie, is a Davis. Now her dad had the blacksmith shop there in Clayton. Who was the Davis? Davis? No, uh, her, her great grandpa would be Mona. He was a Davis. Now I bet there's some relation in there. Of course, yeah, Randy tells me about all them old, they had that dance hall there. And she said all them old Germans and villains used to go over there. And she said they just bring barrels of whiskey. Granddad said, now, Willie, they can bring barrels of whiskey. Yes, I see that. It was all whiskey. And of course, it's beer. She just, she likes to make it sound worse than it was. Yeah, but, uh, they're awfully good people. I really, really gained a lot. Being I used to ride her own Bronco pony. It's very clever Saturday morning. Stay all night at Uncle Bragg's. Come on, yeah. I'll try to get you. Try to nine miles. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. That wasn't uh -huh. a little bit of 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 a little she made me one last year, and oh, it was good. Because she started teaching when she was 16 over here at Low Gap, below Chadwick. And uh, would walk three miles, you know, it was really something. And I take these and then I longhand these out, and then I type them. And then someday, these will be for children that aren't even born yet. So I'm so sick of all this ballyhoo oh. about the Ozarks that I want people to know how it really was. And uh, I've got about... Uh, Four notebooks full of these tapes now. I mean, that, the, each one has about four tapes to it. So I've got about 18 hours of these things now. Really well, takes you be around Uncle Quinn and Uncle Jody for a while, don't you? Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> now that's what I want. See? Hey, what were you we, we, we talking about? I'll tell you, Dad, when we talked a while ago about uh, Round Clever, you know, where your wife uh -huh. and all that, I, I've uh, got a story on tape, uh, old different places, of Quinn and Oscar Sanders. They always handled stallions and jacks. And back during World War One, why they is up a cliff. And it is eight below zero, the blizzard of nineteen seventeen, and when the old Jenny got down and froze to death. She got so she get down and had to lift her up, but she got out and got down and got had covered in snow. I think I can cut this a short Well, that's all right, go ahead. Take but anyhow, <clears throat> who's uh, Quinn, uh, Quinn said they looked at old Jenny and said she served her purpose. And Oscar said, I'm going to call the field man to the farmer's mutual. Either the public or Billings won now. And tell him that Jenny had killed the lightning. <laughs> Quinn said it ain't lightning. And Oscar said, oh, this and he said, that's all right. He called him. So he had a case and Quinn said he's eight below. And uh, said so he drove up after a while in the buggy. The feller was all wrapped up, big old coat and last robes around him, side curtains up. Two horses, a uh, double buggy. He got out in front of the house and hovered around the old horse told him. And uh, told him, and he said, I'm afraid, Sandra, that I can't act on your case. And Quinn uh, said Oscar had to court a baby vest. Baby cur on the saloon. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. there below the square. I've yeah. been in it. Many times. Yeah. Kelly and Kirk. Kelly and Kirk. I got one of these bottles. Uh, yeah. Oh, I got one of their bottles. Oh, well, you? Yeah. So, uh, so, did you ever take a drink? And, well, it's interesting. 
I, I wouldn't care if it just would. He said to me, as cold as it is. Then said he took it pretty good. Warmed a while and said, you better have another one? Yeah. He took it. Glenn said he took, had him took the fourth one. He said, let's go down and let me look into this cage. <laughs> and he walked down the barn and walked around the old Indian kitchen and so I kicked the sidewalk, probed hard. <coughs> Lightning and probed. <laughs> and uh, when said, Oscar said, you better take another. And he said, this flu's a raging. When said he really lowered that baby vest that time. He walked around old Jenny and he said, Boys, I began to see signs of life. <laughs> and he says, uh, Well, he said, just to tell the truth about it, he said, Things are a lot different. I, I understand this situation better now than I did in the first come. And he said, It's a plain case. Jenny's killed a lot. Went to the house. Quinn said, it. He said, it was so drunk he couldn't hardly write the check, but he got him one note for $150. <laughs> and of course, he don't know Quinn like me and Deuce. Quinn said, uh, he wrote him a check for $150. He said, case is closed. John Brown's dead, and the big day is over, and Jenny's killed what? <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't that whole fellow Quinn yard down there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, a bunch of us got ready one Sunday and got some pipe to sell us for the whiskey. He's going to go down and see the big hole in Quinn. This is directly at home, tell me, yeah. yard. The deal was nobody take a drink of Quinn had all he wanted. Of course, we knew we wasn't get one. <laughs> Walked in, of course, when somebody left the gate open. June comes to the door says, Close that gate, you Arkansas son of a bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Went down back of the barn. I went down there. Here Quinn come out and he said Lowell Peters was running for representative then. So Roll was going to talk to him first so he be sure and vote for him. So he jogged in a while and Paul said, Quinn, you want a little drink? Nope. He said, I'll take a big one. He said, Bob, he dabbed your drink. Oh, oh that Jew. See, he's lived with oh. third wife, you know. Yeah. He, uh, <clears throat> his first wife, uh, Quinn's daddy was a Union soldier, and her dad was a rebel soldier. Well, when they had run out of something else to fight about, why, they'd bring that up. <laughs> when Grandpa met him, they both a horseback, and uh, he met him right down this side, Black Jack School House. Grandpa, he used to change his sheep around. He had around 400 acres of land, and he'd shift them sheep from one part to the other. He'd been down and take his sheep and put them in a the 40 down below the old school. He met him. They was cussing each other. Quinn said, what? Grandpa said, what in the world's the matter? Quinn said, she's a damn rebel. Grandpa said, are you Molly? She said, I believe in sleep. Quinn said, see, by said, I told you. She's a damn rebel. He screamed this as loud as he could and said, God damn the rebels. But I hope lightning strikes you, damn you, before you get home. <laughs> <laughs> and took out that hill and her after him on the road. <laughs> and if it had struck her, it might hit him. Yeah. <laughs> that little fair down there a long time ago. Glenn brought one of his big fine jacks in to play him a stock show. They got him drunk one morning and shaved all the hair off of its tail. Oh, God. You talk about oh, a man. What was Quinn like? Glenn Gardner. Glenn Gardner. <laughs> oh, they yeah. can those more tales on him. Well, I'm going to come down here and I want to hear them sometime. I... <laughs> when I sold him the steers, I mean the heifers, I sold him five or six. We lived over yonder, I'd go on to the third of them. There wasn't many cars. Then we drove them through, right through town and on down the Quail's Fur, where he lived. And uh, <coughs> we'd run them round and round in the railroad yard, and I was on the horse and on the foot. He just got to get out. We got him out on the road, we settled down. And I had a half pint in the house, and I said, Quinn, would you like to have a drink? And he said, What? Do you mean that they say you've got a little bit of three hands around? <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, he went up the house and drank about eight of it. We started down the road, and here come one of the Brownings in the car, an old car about ready to fall apart. 
lead the heifer again and get scared and clean and said, look at that. He said the right thing can be at hand, then Satan will offer his service. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure do thank you. Well, you're yeah, you boys. Right. This is March 9, 1976. We were at the home of Glenn Rickman in Crane, Missouri. I was with Harold Woods, who was worked on the railroad with Glenn before he went blind. We had a wonderful evening. Glenn is probably 75, 76 now. Lost his sight about 10 years ago. Shorty, his wife, all the time he was playing these fiddle tunes, I could hear her humming every one of them in the other room.
country music spread like tree roots. It went western. There was Gene Autry. In a vine-covered shack in the mountains, bravely fighting the battle of time, is a dear one who weathered last sorrow, is that silver-haired daddy of mine. Well, he hit the crown, the cotton right and 
left foot of a mighty game fight. The bear he squeezed that old preacher, and he squeezed him a little too tight. The preacher lost his razor, but the bear held on to what film. The preacher cast his eyes to the Lord in the sky, and once more he said to him, Oh Lord, you delivered Daniel from the lion's den. Also delivered Jonah from the valley of the whale and then The Hebrew terrorist from the fire and furnace for the good book to declare. Now, oh Lord, if you can't help me, for goodness sake, don't you help that old bear. Each year, Hal Smith and I present a bluegrass festival in Renfro Valley, Kentucky, and people come from all parts of the country to see it. They come with cars and traders, and some of them even hitchhike. And they really have a wonderful time there, roughing it for three or four days and listening to the old-time music. But you can just lean back now and we'll bring the festival to you. Here's Chubby Wise, one of the festival favorites with an old-time fiddle tune for you. I have a question. I'll tell her to do one that I have to write. And I, I, the people probably know what I'm talking about right now. They were Arn Blossom special. So if you're tired of it, boy, here we go. around events like the Renfro Valley Bluegrass Festival. They come with lawn chairs, thermos bottles, strollers for the babies. They sit on the grass, in the grass, under the trees, and wait for the treasured sound. If it rains, as it did this time, they break out their umbrellas or old newspapers over their heads. They wouldn't think of leaving. This happened to be an electrical storm that fell on us, so the musicians unplugged their instruments, and the festival continued. About 55 years ago, the disc recording and the radio came into practical use. And the distance between people closed like a fist, for better or for worse. And so the cities invaded the hills, and the hills fell down into the cities. And the sound of the hills came out of the hills and began to roll all over this country and most of the rest of the world. After the qualities were Buddy Killen as the executive vice president of Tree International in Nashville and is one of the pace setters in country music. He's also a good friend of mine. I talked to him about the possible courses that country music might take in the future. Thinking of all kinds of music, and you're here in town a lot, and of course I'm traveling a lot, and maybe I'm not right up to date on all the latest things that are happening in the studios and all. Where is our business gonna go from here? This is a question that I get asked so many times. Where is the music going? I don't think anybody could really 
and determine that because we're in a we're in a constant uh, process of changing in the evolution. We have an evolution going every day because today's music is yesterday's music with just a slight variation. You're writing today what was written yesterday with just your own version of it. So musically we're doing the same thing. We're just adding a little to what we 